Yes. So hello everyone. So I'm myself, Dr. Rajesh Gubba. So I'm the SS super specialty educator on the prep ladder platform. So now I have a great honor of introducing Dr. Arno Kalra. So he has secured DM endocrinology AML rank two, that is AIMS merit list rank two. So congratulations, Dr. Arno Kalra. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Right. So it gives me uh, immense pleasure uh, to interact with you and uh, you know join the platform with you because that will be of great help to tell your co-PGs how you have to prepare for the super specialty. So as a part of it, now first let me ask, let me start the discussion or let me start the interview by asking you like uh, from when did you start your preparation for the super specialty? Sir, yeah, actually, uh, initially I was confused regarding which subject I would like to pursue. Uh, in my college, my thesis guide is Dr. Venkatesh Pfizer. He's a rheumatologist. And also, I had a good exposure to endocrinology department during my postings. So I was a bit confused. I think I finally decided by around December last year, sir, that I would like to pursue endocrinology. So you mean to say, like, did you start your preparation the first year, second year, or third year of your residency? Sir, I think in all of these exams, they test your overall knowledge and uh, your preparation uh, starting from maybe even uh, the basic knowledge of biology from class 12 to what all you have learned through MBBS and then through the MD. All of that plays a role in answering the questions. Sir. Right, great. So you mean to say that like all the basic subjects, all the way from plus one, plus two, so it will be useful for giving the exam you're saying, right? Sir, yes. And actually in this year, sir, this INIS, there was one question even on units. Uh, on this nanogram and femtogram also. So yes, the questions can come from high school syllabus also. Yes, yes. So so the exam is being oriented like not only from the residency, so it has been oriented all the way from the basics from plus one and as well as plus two, right? Yes, sir. All kinds of questions are being asked. Right. So just briefly introduce about yourself, like uh, from which college you have done your MBBS and from which college you have done your MD and in which year of M which year of MD you are in. So please introduce yourself. Uh, sir, I have done my MBBS and I'm currently pursuing my MD medicine in Ames Rishikesh, sir. I've just finished my MD final exams. Right. So it's very great that in the first attempt of yours, you are you are able to secure the uh, AML rank two. So hearty congratulations once again for getting the seat in the direct attempt. Thank you. Sir. Right now, see, uh, rather than just going on to like, uh, you know, which material you have followed or which question bank you have done. So let me just directly focus this interview on like, uh, what are the problems we come across during the residency? And how did you come over or how did you cross over that particular problems during residency for your preparation in the super specialty? So mainly I'll focus on that. That will be very much useful for your co-PGs and as well as your juniors. Okay. So now the first thing is definitely when you have done your MD in Ames Rishikesh, Rishikesh I do understand it would be a very busy hospital and you might have had a very busy residency program as well. So now how did you balance your residency program and as well as the preparation for super specialty? Because this is one challenging area many of the uh, people will face like how can I prepare because the residency itself is very busy. By the time we end up our duty it will be around seven or eight in the wards itself and by the time we come to a room or the hostel will be very tired and we are done and we'll sleep off. So that is one particular problem many of the students will be saying. So how did you come, how did you balance your residency program and as well as your preparation? Then I'll answer this in a few points, sir. The first point regarding sleeping is very important. Thankfully, I wake up early. I used to wake up at five and in the morning in those two, three hours prior to going for duty, I had some free time where I could study, sir. The second aspect of residency, yes, sir, residency is very busy. Uh, the good aspect of residency is exposing us to a variety of cases, sir. And so it's important for us to be able to be our approach to all of those symptoms to be able to learn while we are seeing the patients. I'm extremely grateful that in my department, my senior residents have, are very good, sir. Also, the Department of Medicine, uh, we run uh, DM programs, sir, in rheumatology and hospital medicine and clinical care, sir. So the SF I was exposed to, all of them had uh, gone through the uh, entrance exams. All of them were aware of the pattern and the discussions. Even the general discussions which I had regarding a patient, or uh, when I was presenting a patient to them. So even those small points, all of those small discussions, you know, which happened over the course of three years, all of those matter and they taught me a lot. So I'm extremely grateful to my college in that aspect. 
the second aspect is uh, which is because the syllabus is fast and we may have limited time so then we have to be sure that these are the things which we will cover and uh, we have to stick to that one uh, we can get inspiration and we can get guided by the previous year question papers and the topics which are important or any recent updates which may have happened and based on that those topics only we have to revise again and again practice mcqs from those topics and make sure whatever two three hours we have to study we can be most of the time right so uh, very great so to summarize and tell so what uh, dr arno has done is so he he used to get up early in the morning at 5 o'clock in order to get that particular time of the preparation so very important thing is like the time will not be there but you have to make up the time for your preparation so that is a very very important take home message for all the co-pgs and as well as the juniors so you have to take out your time for your preparation that is very very important right and another challenging thing like many of the postgraduate residents will face during their residency is like arnav i'll just ask you are you married or are you single i'm single sir you are single right so but so if you see most of the residents i don't say all but around 50 to 60 percentage of the residents they do get married in the first year or second year or third year that is another very very important challenging task of their life you know to balance the married life and as well as the residency and as well as the preparation as well so uh, even though you're not married but uh, can you just give like uh, a small you know like the tip for the uh, people who have been married right and doing their residency and wanted to prepare for super specialty so what is the take home message that you want to give for the married post graduates how to balance their life sir i am uh, not experienced enough to specifically comment on marriage but okay. uh, i will say that in general in, the, in my personal life uh, talking to friends and maintaining friendship with them uh, there is a matter of quality the quality time we spend so whenever i used to spend time with them it's important that i don't look at my phone i don't have any other distractions and those 5 10 minutes 20 minutes whatever i'm getting to spend they are genuine moment which uh, make me feel better and make them feel better so i think that is important sir, for real bonding right so along with the residency you also have learned like how to lead the life after the marriage <laughs> <laughs> so great of you right and the other thing is like very very important part of your preparation is the source of material right so now coming to the source of material like which particular source like did you read any particular standard books for your super specialty or did you read any particular material what is that you will guide to your juniors and as well as co pgs which material to be focused on for the super specialty preparation Sir, for this, uh, I'll be able to for the INSS medicine part is mostly from Harrison sir. Some important topics they ask from outside also sir. For that previous year papers are there. For endocrinology, a large percentage of it is from Harrison. Some percentage is from Williams sir. And uh, also in endocrine, uh, so for Williams I went through the table sir and the important topics are there. Uh, one more thing is in endocrinology we have a book by Bhansali sir, sir, which is a very nice book and it tells about the clinical aspects of endocrinology and it really explains the concepts. And also helps for the interview, telling about the approach to each case and what all we have posted. Mm -hmm. right so like when you are having the challenge of reading or uh, you know memorizing the voluminous content like what are the strategies that you have taken to revise in the last minute of your preparation because one month before preparation or one sorry one month before the exam one week before the exam five days before the exam were you able to revise that voluminous content what is the strategy that you have followed sir actually uh, i had my pre professional uh, till march 31st i had normal duties and we have two units in medicine so i had to do alternate day opd emergency all of those things i did in april we had a pre professional exam sir and in may we had a final professional exam thankfully the inss theory part took place in between both of these exams and even the interview was in between my final prof theory and practical exams so what i did was i uh, like during my pg prep also I used uh, software to make flashcards, sir, for all the important facts and points which I need to remember, sir. They help me recall them and to specifically know that which things I am forgetting, so I can revise them later on, sir. So, like, what is very important part of the preparation, according to is, like, you need we need to prepare some revisable notes, like as you said, yes, like, the, like flashcards and all. So, the prepare the preparing our own material in a revisable manner is a very very important part of the preparation. That is what. Uh, is being said to your juniors and as well as the co pgs right yes, sir. right and uh, do you uh, really tell like sir 
these many number of revisions are required for uh, cracking the exam or sir, like I, you need only for one time and you could crack the exam sir i think that whole concept of readings like one reading two reading and the concept of revision is not that accurate we have to be honest with ourselves there are some things we might remember even with just a single read. while there are other things which we have to uh, you know memorize the day before the exam mark the exam and when come back we forget that so that honesty is important that even in that voluminous or revisable notes which part of the table which exact fact we are forgetting and for that we have to practice mcqs we have to do tests and we have to be honest with ourselves that here i am making a mistake here there is a lacuna in my knowledge and this is how i like to fix it or what uh, we'll do about okay so great so in uh, you mean to say rather than giving the numbers like first preparation second preparation third preparation so what you say is like whatever you have read for the first attempt right the genuinity has to be maintained or honesty has to be maintained in your preparation and understanding the concept of that particular content is very very important right yes. and uh, one uh, quick question is uh, i just ask i wanted to just ask you so how did uh, the material or the questions of prep ladder help you in getting your super specialty rank sir uh, the mcqs are very important sir and the qbank helps with that and also the mock tests help with that they also provide a schedule so we know that till this date we have to cover this much material and we have to just appear for the exam even if we have not completely covered the material just the act of writing an exam sitting in an exam helps because it tells us which concepts are there somewhere in our memory what things we know which help us rule out options and how do we mark something correctly when we, when we are not completely sure even in the real exam the same thing is going to happen so we have to practice according this right so you mean to say that solving the test and uh, solving the question papers and solving the test and discussions and solving the previous year questions will help us guiding in what way the questions will be asked Yes, sir. That's essential, sir. Yeah. In what way? Like we need to prepare ourselves because if we take the entire Harrison, like two volumes of the books which are there in front of us, it is almost impossible and next to impossible for e read from end to end. It is not possible for us. But if you particularly following one particular test and discussion or question bank, that will help us in guiding how to prepare for your preparation, right? Yes, sir. right and one important thing is because like in the current practice which is going on in the society which we are seeing like uh, do you advise all your juniors and as well as co pgs that is it mandatory to definitely do a super specialty or is it like to stop the you know the career at the level of mdms what is your take on this sir it's a personal choice because obviously super specialty is help in certain situations sir but let's say i personally let's say if some day i happen to get a common cold at that point of time i have to see that someone who has done an md medicine i will not go to a dm and fetch the fees just to treat a common cold or a dm pulmonary medicine for a sore throat so and also uh, the medicine the core concepts which we have developed in our residency that tell us how to look at the patient as a whole it is possible that only one system may be the presenting feature but the underlying especially in branches like endocrinology rheumatology and other branches also it may be underlying systemic disease might be has just mainly presented with a single symptom or a single organ system in all right so you mean to say that like uh, definitely we should have the knowledge of the entire general medicine and yes. at the same time depending upon our circumstances right it is better to go ahead with the super specialty as well depends on the person sir yeah so because like many of the people you know they'll have the challenges in their life like uh, once they complete their md ms like they'll be having that financial responsibility from the family but some yes they can go ahead even in the super specialty as well so that particular challenges will be there in everyone's life it all depends upon the individual person but preferably like uh, definitely if you have a scope that you have a support a supporting family system right what uh, i advise or what dr arnav advises to go ahead with the super specialty if you have a proper support system am i right and it's a personal choice there are people even among my seniors who really enjoy medicine who really like it and who like to stick to it sir especially in other countries and even in my own institute so a new branch of hospital medicine and of hospitalists is coming up people who want to do entire medicine but also would like some extra training beyond the md to be able to become better at
Right. So one quick last question without taking much of your time. Now, you just tell your juniors or your co-PGs like in quick uh, methods of like how to go ahead with your preparation. What are the tips that you will be advising to your juniors and as well as co-PGs to get this super specialty rank like what you have achieved? So please give us the tips to the juniors. The first, the first tip will be to have a goal and to stick to it and to tell other people also about the goal. Because that makes us, uh, the social uh, aspect of it makes us responsible for the goal and it pushes us to work upon it. My own friends, my co-PGs, all the people in my department, they were very helpful and they understood that I was working towards this goal. So even during rounds, they would ask me relevant questions or they would help me and support me how and when it was happening. After we have defined the goal, we have to find the path to work towards it. So I would suggest that in the initial one week or two weeks, when we are starting our prep, we should first go through the previous year questions and their discussions well, so that we know what topics are being asked frequently and we can prioritize them accordingly. We also have to see that how is our own understanding of those subjects and which subjects require, yeah, which topics require more work or require more attention. Well. Based on that, we have to make a plan and then we have to try to stick to it. It's in the case of residency and situations like that, we may not have so much time. So we have to put some 10 15% buffer also that if we, if something happens, then this is how we manage. Right. So the very important thing, like what Dr. Arnav said is like setting up a goal and after setting up a goal, you have to follow that particular pathway. How to achieve that particular goal is very, very important part of your preparation. Right. So it was very great, Dr. Arnav, like interviewing you and taking the tips for your co-PGs and as well as juniors. And I once again congratulate and I wish you best of the luck for your all your future endeavors. And I wish that you will be settling as a best doctor in the entire world. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.